Hello, my name is Amy and I am the knitter behind Knee Knits on Instagram and Etsy and I'm here to record my first knitting podcast. So the fall weather has come, it's getting chilly in the air and everyone's got knitting projects on their mind, uh, cozy sweaters and cardigans. So I wanted to share a little bit about what I'm working on now, some yarn that I got this month as well as some finished objects that I finished in September. So we're gonna get right into it. So feel free to grab some coffee or a drink or your project and let's get started. All right, hi guys. This is my first time recording a podcast. I love everything about knitting. I feel like I'm constantly looking up knitting content, whether it's blogs, um, Instagram posts, TikToks, and lately I've been super into YouTube podcasters. I think it's really fun to put them on in the background while I'm working on a project, as well as to watch them for inspiration on new projects or new patterns. So today I'm going to go through some of my finished objects in September, as well as some works in progress that I started, as well as some yarn that I got. So we're gonna start with one of my first finished objects of the month, which was my Riley tee that I have here. I finished this on September 1st. I just checked my Ravelry page for the date. So it just made the cut for this video. So this is my Riley tee. I don't remember when I started it, probably in the middle of summer. Um, it started because I had in my stash two skeins of Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend, which is the yarn that I used to make this. And I knew that was enough for a t-shirt, something light and springy. So I was looking up patterns. I believe it's a DK weight, a little bit of a heavier DK weight yarn, but I saw this by Rachel Knits Things on Instagram. And it was just this lovely boxy crew neck t-shirt. And I really like the detail on the sleeves, if you can see here. The ribbing on the sleeves that extends on either side of the shoulders I thought was really nice. Some other key design aspects of the t-shirt that drew me to the pattern were the folded hems. You can see the collar is folded as well as the shirt hems and the whole bottom hem of the shirt itself. And I think it looks really neat. You know, you have plain stockinette with a pearl ridge and then stockinette continued. And so that made me want to make the pattern. The pattern calls for a DK weight merino wool. Um, this was a cotton yarn blend that I had. So a little bit different than what was called for. I think overall it made a really nice tee. Cotton was easy to work with and overall it was a pretty affordable project. I believe I got the two balls of yarn from Joanne for less than $20 to make this whole t-shirt. The yarn is a 50-50 cotton polyester blend, so it is machine washable and was pretty easy to work with. The interesting thing that I really love about this yarn is the way that the two fibers picked up the dyes. So this is the color silver lining, and I believe that means they wanted it to be a gray. Now it's up to you if you think whether it's gray or blue. To me, I see the shirt and I think it's blue, um, but depending on the lighting, it could look either way. But if you look closely, the cotton and the polyester strands within the yarn are pretty distinct because they picked up the dye differently. And again, I'll hold this up to the camera. So you guys can see it creates sort of a tonal effect in the whole design and I think that adds a lot of depth to a pretty basic shaped pattern so I was really excited about that. I think in the sample and the pattern she used a hand painted merino wool so it looked really nice with the different speckles and I don't have exactly that but it was pretty close with what I had in my stash. Other cool parts about this design were all of the short row shaping. I think the designer put in a lot of effort with how the shoulders were shaped as well as the sleeve caps. You know, there was shoulder shaping, um, short rows that really added a lot of depth to the shirt. You know, it's not just a plain rectangle, so it does fit pretty well. I did block this, even though it is cotton and polyester. It didn't block exactly as I had hoped, you know, blocking natural fibers that aren't animal fibers can be tricky as well as um, things like polyester and acrylic don't block as well. So I was hoping that this ribbing strip on the shoulders would kind of open up, but you can see it collapses on itself. And that was after wet blocking. So I had soaked this in a big bowl of wool wash and then laid it out with pins 
on my boards to dry and it just didn't flatten like I had wanted to. So I may try it again. Maybe I'll try it with a steamer. Sometimes heat helps. Um, but that was the only thing I didn't really like about this project. Some notes about the yarn. I did find it to be a little bit splitty. Uh, the polyester strand has definitely got some like fuzz to it where the cotton is very smooth. And I found my needles to be splitting through the polyester strand. Not enough to notice, but it, you know, was something to note in the project. It also was kind of heavy. Cotton does tend to be heavy. So even though this is just a t-shirt, like it has some heft to it. So I wouldn't want to wear this in the middle of summer when it's very warm, but I think it's perfect for late spring or um, early fall when the weather is a little bit cooler, but not quite cold enough to put on long sleeves. So yeah, this is one finished project in the month. My next one, I'm really excited about this one. I didn't think I would be. This was another stash buster, and it is the Cambria wrap. Try to get the whole thing on camera. Ooh. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> so this here is the Cambria wrap. It's a pattern by Two of Wands. I made this in Lion Brand Wool Ease yarn in the color Oatmeal, and it is it is so cool. I've never made a shawl before. I always thought shawls weren't really my style, but I really like the way she styled it on her blog. You know, you can wear them. I think when you see them draped over people's shoulders with the triangle point in the back, it can seem a little out of date, but Two of Wands, she usually styles her triangle scarves kind of like this with the point in the front. And I think this is just such like a cool look. I can picture myself in the deep winter when you really wanna cover your face when you're walking through like a cold, windy parking lot and having like a big coat on, maybe even a beanie. And I think this is like cute and really nice. And there are lots of different ways to wear it besides that. Like I could drape it over the back of my shoulders, maybe without the point being all the way down my back, but I can scrunch up the point and sort of wear it as like an oversized scarf. So this project was really cool. I also just love the stitch pattern. So she really kept you on your toes with the pattern. It was one of those you can't really bring it anywhere because you had to have the pattern next to you to look at the stitch that you were working on for that section. But you can see every section was a different stitch pattern. Lots of eyelet work. I've never done a ton of lace before, but this was very simple. It is a worsted weight project, so wasn't as tricky with the lace. And I really like the tassels too. She had very clear instructions on how to make the tassels. This was a free pattern on her blog. So also another inexpensive project because the wool ease yarn, um, I don't know the exact price, but it's probably around five to $7 per ball at Joanne. I think this used three balls, if that. I think I had some left over. And it just came together really nicely. I was a little worried as I had started this project because I don't often work with acrylic yarn. Wool Ease is a 80% acrylic, 20% wool blend. And I've kind of become a yarn snob after using a lot of wools in my projects. And once I went back to this acrylic, I kind of felt, you know, kind of like the plasticiness and the springiness in this yarn. I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like this, but I kept powering through and I'm glad I did because I did finish it when I casted it off. It was pretty like bunchy and rounded. Um, and I was like, all right, I will block this and see how it goes. Now this is really big. So I wasn't about to put this in like a big bowl of water and try to squeeze out all the water. That just seemed like a nightmare. And knowing that it was mostly acrylic, I was like, oh, I think I'll steam block it because acrylic can handle steam pretty well. Um, as long as you're not pressing the steamer right onto the fabric. So I laid it out on my blocking boards. I actually didn't have enough blocking boards for the whole wrap. So I substituted some like cork boards that I use under my pots to help spread it out with my pins. And I took my steamer and you could see the stitches flattening out as I ran the steamer over it. It was kind of magical to see like this eyelet piece opening up and these stripes flattening out and it really transformed the wrap. It made it look before, it was definitely something crafty, 
and then I steam blocked it and now it looks like something professional. So I'm like very excited about this. I had this laying on the couch for a while on the bed as kind of like a display piece and I'm very excited to wear it this winter. So those were my two finished objects in September. Um, I've also been pumping out a ton of hats, which I won't really show here, but I do sell hats on Etsy. So those will probably be separate videos, but um, I feel like in the winter time when I'm focusing on my hat shop, my finished objects for myself slow down because obviously I'm focusing on hats and stuff. But I was able to start a couple new projects this month, which sort of coincided with some yarn purchases. So the first one that I'll show here is the polo sweater. And this is a pattern by Originally Lovely, also knit with Lion Brand yarn. So I ordered this on their website. This is Lion Brand Superwash Merino. And this is from their LB collection. So it's not normally stocked in places like Joanne or Michaels. And I wanted to try it. It's 100% Merino. It is Superwash. It was the recommended yarn for the project. And I'll put a little photo of the finished project from the pattern page here. Um, but I feel like polo sweaters are kind of like on trend this year. They were on trend last year and there aren't that many patterns out there for them. I know Petite Knit has her mod tee, um, but that one had mohair and it was a t-shirt base. And I kind of wanted like a long sleeve, lightweight sweater. So this one by Originally Lovely really fit the bill. So you can see I've gotten pretty far on it. This was a slow start because you do have to do the V-neck raglan flat before you can join in the round. And I actually went ahead and did the collar before I split off for the sleeves. So the pattern has you do the body, do the sleeves, and then the collar is last. But I was so excited about the concept of a polo sweater that I knew I wanted to see how the polo collar would turn out as soon as I could. So I knit through as much as the body as I could. I believe I got through one ball of yarn. And when I ran out of yarn, I decided to go on to the collar. And whew, this was a doozy. So the collar is double knit. So you pick up stitches and you do double knitting and you have some increases in the back that helps shape the collar. And double knitting, if you haven't done it before, it's a lot of work. It gets very tight on the needles. It takes forever because the rows build um, at half the speed but the end result is so worth it. Like this collar looks so professional. It doesn't curl because it's double knit. Both sides look really nice. It's very thick. Ooh, focus. Oh yeah. So it's very thick and to sort of give you a representation of double knitting, you can see here that it's actually two layers of fabric that you're knitting at the same time. So this is, all of the collar and I'm very excited for this. I did try it on just to make sure it fit because I split off for the armholes and it looks really nice. I'm excited for this to finish. It'll be a while because this is on four and a half millimeter needles but right now I'm on the body which is a straight stockinette and I'll move on to the sleeves pretty soon. So this will be a fun project. Can't wait to show you guys progress on it. One of the interesting things, even though it is made in the round, the uh, pattern designer does warn about superwash merino wool and superwash merino wool is known for growing with wash and wear. So I did do a gauge swatch before and I washed it and I stretched it out and it does bloom a little bit. The stitches puff up, the fabric gets a little drapier than how it was knit. So the pattern does warn that the sweater may be tighter then the finished object will be because after you block it, it'll grow. So the underarms did kind of come pretty snug with the with my underarms, but I'm hoping when I block it, it'll sort of relax out as my gauge swatch did. She's also having us do faux stitches on the side, which I've never done before. But when you knit in the round, I'm adding pearl bumps to each side. And then after the sweater is all done and after it's blocked, you sort of go in with a crochet hook and add some stitches up the side where those pearl bumps were. And that's supposed to help increase the integrity of the sweater 
and help it not stretch out as much over time because those crochet stitches will stay firm while the rest of the sweater hopefully will stay firm with it. So first time doing faux stitches, I'll let you guys know how it goes when I get there. So yeah, that's my first whip of the month. Um, my second one here, let me get some water. All right, very excited for this one. I am starting my first pair of socks. Okay, not my first pair, I lied. I've actually tried socks twice before. I've been knitting since I was in middle school and I tried a pair of socks when I was in middle school. Back then I knew nothing about yarn, I knew nothing about gauge. So it was this ridiculous sock that was huge, but I got to the heel, I made an ankle sock because in middle school tall socks weren't cool. So I did a really short cuff and then went straight into the heel turn. I finished the heel and then got tired of it. I was working on DPNs and it was clearly too big so I abandoned it. It was kind of like an ankle warmer that I called it. I only had one. So that was my first attempt at a sock. My second attempt was last year. I had some Filcolana Arweta Classic which is just a lovely um, Danish, I believe, sock yarn that's 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. And I tried doing a striped sock with that that was also a broken rib pattern. And I was doing it on a magic loop and it was just too much. There was a lot going on. I didn't like the magic loop. The changing colors was very difficult for me. In addition, it was in broken rib. So I also got to the heel there, but it was going to be a gift and I had whoever was receiving it, try it on and it didn't fit. I wasn't enjoying it. So I actually ended up frogging that at the beginning of the summer. That was my second attempt at a sock that failed. So this is my third attempt, but I think third time's the charm. So first attempt was with DPNs and I really don't like working with DPNs. That's just like, I try to avoid them at all costs. Some knitters don't mind DPNs, I, I do. So, and then my second attempt was with Magic Loop which was all right, but again, working with the stripes and stuff, I think just wasn't a good combo. So I went to my local yarn store and I was like, okay, I'm gonna try it with nine inch circulars, which are these teeny tiny circular needles that pretty much are only ever used for socks. And I was like, I'm gonna get myself a nice exciting sock yarn to help motivate me to get through the sock. And I think it worked. I started this a couple days ago and I am following the vanilla socks pattern by the Crazy Sock Lady, which is a free pattern on YouTube. And I'm flying through it. The circular needles definitely make a big difference. And this yarn, which I'll talk about in a minute, is just gorgeous. It's like a hand-painted berry red. Really reminded me of autumn yarn. I mean, just look at those colors. And look at how it comes out in the sock. It's, it's so cool. So yeah, I just got through the heel flap. I actually just found out that I did the heel flap wrong. It's a slip stitch heel flap where you're supposed to slip every other stitch on the knit side and then purl all the purl stitches as you work flat. But I actually slipped all the purl stitches as well. Turns out that's not what you're supposed to do. So after I'm done filming this, I'm actually gonna frog this heel flap and then redo it. And hopefully next time we talk, I may have a completed pair of socks. I am a little worried about second sock syndrome where I'm gonna finish this first one and not have any motivation to do the second one. But I heard to help get over that, you know, as soon as you cast off the first sock to immediately cast on the second sock. So I'm gonna try and do that and we'll see how it goes. So, Amy's first socks, you guys are seeing it here. Okay, so now we're going to get into acquisitions for the month and September, you know, the cool air came in. I got really excited about fall projects. So I kind of went crazy with getting the yarn, but it means I got a lot to talk about. So we're gonna dive into it. So the first thing that I have here, which was super exciting for me is this here, this combo. So I have Santa Scarn Sunday, and I have 
some Surrey alpaca from Plymouth Yarn. And I'm planning on making the Petite Knit Friday vest with this, or Friday slipover, I can't remember what she calls the pattern. But I've been wanting to make a sweater vest for a while now. I, kind of, I think they came into trend last fall. I didn't really have time to make one. And I think they're a really cool layering piece. Um, I have some long sleeve crew neck t-shirts that I think would look really nice underneath a knitted vest and it's also a pretty straightforward project. It only required for me to make a size small three balls of Sunday and then three balls of mohair. She does call for some kid silk mohair and I was at my local yarn store and I was looking for some kid silk mohair but they didn't really have a good selection of neutrals and I knew I wanted a beige sweater vest so I got this Surrey Stratus by Plymouth Yarn which I've never used Surrey Alpaca before. This is a 68% Surrey Alpaca, 32% nylon yarn. And it looks pretty similar to mohair. Like, and it's very soft, like pretty much identical. It definitely seems a little bit thicker. I've used Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair a ton before. I've used it with San Escar and Sunday and it is just like, an immaculate yarn combination. I understand now why Petite Knit uses that combo so often in all of her projects. Like, if you have the opportunity to knit with that combo, the single strand of mohair and the single strand of Sunday or fingering weight wool, like, do it. It makes such a soft and drapey fabric, but it's so warm because of the mohair and because of the wool content it looks so professional like the stitches are super neat once you block it it's just so flat and the stitches are plump and so smooth it seems like it's store-bought i can't get enough so when i went to my local yarn store i actually just moved this summer so new local yarn store for me here when I went in there, I was just checking it out. I didn't have a plan in mind of what to buy, but I saw that they had Sandus Garn. Now, I didn't know that Sandus Garn was carried here in the US in store. Maybe that's me being ignorant, I don't know. But I thought it was only available um, to order online or, um, yeah, to order online, maybe from Etsy shops or other yarn sellers. So when I saw that they had Santa's Garn, I was like, oh my goodness, here we go. So you may be seeing a lot of petite knit patterns from me in the future. They had a pretty small selection of Sunday. I think they had the putty color. They had a few blues, like a light sky blue and a dark deep blue, but they also had this beige. So I grabbed three of these for the Friday vest. And like I said before, I was looking for a matching mohair. They didn't really have any, so I settled for the Surrey Alpaca. So I haven't swatched it yet, so these are completely untouched. When I swatch it, I'll let you guys know how that goes, and I can't wait to get started on the project. I actually haven't casted it on yet because the Friday Vest uses four and a half millimeter needles, which is the same needle size that I'm using right now for the polo sweater. And I don't know, I only have one set of those needles. I don't know if I wanna be swapping them out all the time if I have both projects going on. So I think I'm gonna try to like rush through, well, you know, speed through the polo sweater so I can start the vest. But um, I do have my other projects going on and that brings me to my next yarn purchase at the same local yarn store. So I got here I couldn't believe this. I walked into the yarn store on a separate occasion. This is maybe a couple weeks after I got this and they had all these bins lined up in the store and it was apparently their fall sale and I didn't know they have a fall sale, but everything in the bins was 40% off plus an additional 10 and all final sale. And I was like, oh my goodness, I came in here for something else, but I'm probably gonna walk away with something I wasn't planning on buying. So I got this Lana Grossa Cool Merino. It's a chainette yarn. It's, I believe, an Aran weight. And it's in this gray color. And it's super soft and light. Like, this ball is super light. This is 50 grams, and you get 150 meters out of this. I got the whole bag of the dye lot, so I got eight balls of this, because I didn't know what I wanted to make so I was like, let me get as much as I can for a sweater quantity. 
I thought about a couple crochet sweater, pro sweater patterns that I've liked, and I know crochet uses more yarn than knitting in a garment, so I was like, let me get eight to be safe. It was 40% off, and this is a 90% merino wool, and I was like, that's a good deal. So I think I got a whole sweater's quantity of merino for, you know, 40% off, and that is a good deal for that. So I was looking through my pattern library and trying to figure out, okay, what can I make for this with this? It's super light and plushy. It kind of spoke cozy cardigan to me. And one cardigan that I've really been interested in is the Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta. And it's a half fisherman's rib cardigan. Kind of imitates brioche, um, but it's not brioche. It's half fisherman's rib stitch and it kind of mimics those cardigans that you see at the mall. I know H&M has a popular one. I think Madewell also has one. And I see the cardigans every year and I don't buy them at the mall because I'm like, oh, I can make that so easily. But have I made one? No. But I'm gonna do it this fall. So I swatched in the half fisherman's rib in this and look at that. It's so nice. It's super light and stretchy, and I think it's gonna make an awesome cardigan. And the gauge was correct with the pattern. I believe that she has two seasons cardigans. One is the oversized and one is the regular. I don't really know the big difference besides one is a little bit bigger. Um, so the oversized one gauge fits this yarn a little bit better than the regular, so I'm gonna go with the oversized one. I haven't casted that on yet, but because my four and a half millimeter needles are busy and I can't start my Friday vest, I'll probably start that one pretty soon. So again, I'm super excited to show you guys that. It has a beautiful double knit collar band, button band that goes all the way around. That's knit simultaneously as the cardigan itself. So I think it'll be a really fun project. I haven't knit an Aran weight in a while, like this bulky, I usually knit, lately I've been on DK weight or smaller, so I think it'll go by pretty quick in comparison to the projects I've been doing. So that should be a fun one. Ooh. All right, more yarn. This was kind of an impulse buy. I had a coupon for Lion Brand and they were having a sale like they always do. And I've been eyeing the Two of Wands Campsite Waffle Cardigan forever. It just looks like the coziest cardigan. I love texture and I have an oversized sort of similar style and shape cardigan that I have from like the mall in my closet and I wear it all the time. So I was like, oh, what better than having one that I made myself? And her campsite waffle cardigan is made in the fields like butta yarn. So I got the kit with the coupon. I think it was like $20 in total for a whole cardigan's worth of yarn. This is 100% polyester, and I believe they advertise this yarn mostly for babies, um, but it is so soft. It's kind of like a brushed texture. I believe it's a chainette structure yarn, so it should be a breeze to knit with. I'm excited for the cardigan. The cardigan is knit flat in the waffle stitch and then seamed. I think I'm going to knit the body flat and then seam it and then try to pick up the arms in the round and see how that goes. I always have issues with entirely seamed garments. When you get to the arms, it's really hard to gauge how big the arm length or how long the arm should be. So again, I haven't casted it on yet. I don't think I've even swatched. No, I haven't swatched for it yet. So once I get that going, I will show you guys as well. So if you guys wanna see all these projects I'm thinking of starting, stay tuned for the next video. Hopefully we'll have some progress on them. A little bit more about the yarn, let's see. This is the color Coco. It's kind of like a milky brown. I feel like I've been buying this color a lot and not realizing I'm buying this color a lot. Like I see the brown, I love neutrals, I love cooler tones, and I look at the whole, you know, swatches of all the color cards and I'm like, ooh, that brown is pretty. I did that with the Lion Brand Superwash Merino, and then I bought this, and I bought some woolies in like a similar color as well. I actually ended up gifting that to someone, so I won't be making a project from that, but 
I don't know, I'm just really attracted to this kind of milky brown. But I am gonna kind of limit myself on buying it in the future because I wanna get some more variety into my knitwear wardrobe. Got a lot of neutral, so I'm kind of looking forward to some color. I think that the socks will help. Um, all right, last, the last acquisition was kind of a surprise one. So I was ordering yarn for my hat shop from We Are Knitters. I use their petite wool for a lot of my beanies. And they were having this deal where if you spent over a certain amount of money, you would get a free surprise gift as part of their anniversary celebration. So my order came in and I honestly forgot that there was a surprise gift in the bag. So I was unpacking the order and I saw this and I was like, oh, they messed up my order. I was like, I think I got someone else's yarn. But then I realized that this was the surprise gift. So I got the tape by We Are Knitters. And this is a 100% recycled yarn. It says in parentheses on the label, mainly cotton. This is in navy. It kind of is like a shoelace material. I've heard of it. I've never really looked into it. I definitely think this is a crochet yarn. 100%. Like, I don't know what I would knit with this, but I was quickly looking up patterns on Ravelry and everything was either crochet baskets, crochet trivets, crochet, like, trays. So I don't know exactly what I can do with one ball of this, but I am excited to do something with it. I don't know. Maybe I'll make a pot holder or like a little tray for my coffee table. So there, that's my surprise gift from We Are Knitters. Thank you for that. And that about wraps it up for today's podcast. I am super excited to get back into knitting and talking about knitting and just being able to share all the little details of the projects I'm working on. You know, there's only so much you can fit into like an Instagram post or an Instagram story. And I feel like podcast watchers are already invested in the topic. So I'm glad you guys are here. Thank you for listening. I am on Instagram at Neenits. And if you are interested in checking out my shop, I have a few patterns on there. So I'll link my Ravelry as well as my Etsy shop link below, as well as the links to all the patterns and stuff. I hope you guys had a great time knitting with me or just listening or maybe getting excited to start your next project. And see you again soon.